Hello everyone, and welcome to 403 Forbidden's video tutorials on how to program in C. This is part 2. In part 1, I showed you how to write a basic program, and how it worked, and things like that, and now we're going to get a little bit more advanced. Now, right here, www.c++.com slash reference slash C library is an invaluable resource. It is really cool. Um, it is for C++, but it does have all of the information on the C library that you could need. It shows all of the files here, they're just tweaked a little bit. Like for instance, um, come on, where'd it go? <laughs> here we go, CSTDIO. This is stdio.h, so just add the dot .h and get rid of the C in front of it, and that's the corresponding header file. C. Now, so here's what I'm going to show you. Um, in the first thing we did the printf function. Now I'm going to open up our program here. This is where we left off. Let's make this a little bit more readable for you guys here. Right here, what we're doing is we're printing hello world and an enter key, basically. Now, if you go here and you go to CSTDIO, right here, and then you go down to come on, where is it? <laughs> there it is. To print F, it gives you a little list of the things that you can put in to um, the into the text right here. Now a lot of that you guys don't know what it means, and that's okay, but you will learn. Now let's see, I believe it's up, yeah it's right here. So right here, n means nothing printed. The argument must be no, this is the wrong thing. <laughs> well anyway, somewhere in here it shows yeah, see like right here. The slash n that is the enter key. Um, I don't I don't quite see it in here exactly. It may be referring to this anyway. Um, so this is a list of all of the different things that you can use with the printf function. Now I'm going to show you guys. You know, I'm going to introduce you guys a little bit to variables here. Now, variables are if you read the or I mean if you watch the AutoWit tutorial. Um, variables are places where you can store information. In AutoIt, it's a little bit different from this. In this, you need to define what kind of variable it is. Is it a character? Is it a number? What is it? Now, int, int, int that represents an integer. An integer is a number. To define a variable, all you have to do is type in integer and then the name of the variable. We'll just call it var. And then that after it you have initialized your first variable. If we want to if we want to put something in variable, we put equals and then we'll just do like 64. Now, right here, you may be asking, you know, how do you get that out onto the console? Well, if you just type in var, that's not going to work. Because if we compile this program, get hello world and then var. It's not, it's taking that as a string literal. We need it to actually look at the variable. To do that, now this might throw you a little bit, you put in percent %d. I believe it's d. Check, is it d? Um, yes. Now right here, this is a list of a bunch of different kinds of specifiers, as it says. c is for character, d or i is for an integer, E is for a scientific notation, notation, floating point, all of this will make sense later. Right now, just focus on this, D. Percent, oops, percent D is represent, is like a placeholder.
for something that you type in later. It's a it's a little placeholder for a decimal. Um, I'm sorry, decimal, right? Yes, a decimal integer. So, basically, this right here is going to be translated into whatever we want. We want it to be translated into what var contains. So to do that, we just do a comma, a space, and we type in var. So what it does is it goes down the list, and it looks at each one of the things that start with a percent sign. So if the first thing that comes to is percent %d, it takes the first additional argument, which is this one, var, and puts that right there into percent %d. So if we can change this around a little bit, we can say var equals percent %d slash n. Percent %d is the value of the variable, and this is the enter key. So, we save this, we compile it, and when we run it, look what it says, var equals 64. Isn't that amazing? So, you have, def assi you have assigned your first variable and printed it out. Now, a little thing about variables. Variables are areas, whoops, variables are areas in memory. Now, if you assign, it first assigns where in memory that is. You can find that out. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, first, it assigns where in memory that is, and then it assigns a value to it, if you say so. If you don't, something kind of interesting happens. It assigns where that variable is, but whatever information was just sitting there, sits there. And so if you initialize a variable, but don't give it, you don't assign it any information, you'll just get whatever is sitting there in memory. So this program right here, without assigning var anything, does something kind of interesting. It just gives whatever is sitting in memory. In this case, it's a number 444052. Now if you do it again, something else probably is going to show up. It does. Look at that. 16404468. That's because it's to put that variable in a different place in memory. And therefore, the output is a little bit different, and probably always will be. Now, say you want to do a little bit of arithmetic. You want to change some of these things. Something like this. There are a bunch of operators, and this is one of them. It's a plus sign. All that does is adds this and this and puts it in var. So basically, if we run this program, you probably can expect what's going to happen. Whoops. It gives a value 74, because 64 plus 10 is 74. That value is stored into var, and down here it gets printed out. Now, there are a bunch of different... We'll bring it up here real quick. There are a bunch of different operators that are in C and in C++. If we look around here under arithmetic operators, or arithmetic operators, one of them is addition, the one we just used, the plus sign. There's also basic assignment. This assigns um, a variable, just like right here, var equals 64 plus 10. The other ones we have are minus. Um, don't worry about those for now. Uh, multiplication, division, modulus, which calcul calculates the remainder, and an increment operator. Now, this increment operator is kind of interesting. It raises the value by one. Now, there are two different ways to do this, but right now we'll just focus on this one right here. What you can do is you can open this up, and you can do 64 plus plus. What this will do, this plus plus thing, increases whatever is behind it by one. So if you run this program, whoops. Ooh, I'm sorry, I did that wrong. I'm sorry, guys, it doesn't work on raw numbers like that. You have to do it to a variable. This will work. We assign 64 to a variable, and then we take that variable and increase it by 1. If you compile this program, it gives us 65. That's a kind of interesting operator that you can use as well. Multiplication always al also works. 
we can do 64 times 10. If we do that, we get 640. So there are a bunch of different operators here that you can use to your advantage to change a lot of things about numbers. Something else we can do you can do is change is have two variables and then add them together what this does is it takes var 2 which is 32 times 10 320 and this which is 640 and adds them together that makes a var itself plus var 2 if we run this program probably expect what's going to happen, we get 960. Something else you can do is you don't even need this part right here. You can put it directly into the printf function. So this value right here, percent %d equals var plus var2. 960 again, same thing. And this is more efficient than that because Oh, I guess it's not in this case. <laughs> if we did this, if we use a separate variable, result, now, if we compile this, this will work. 960. If we do this, we have to make a whole nother variable to store the result of var plus var2. But if we take that out and don't store it and just put it directly into the function, it gets a lot more efficient. And it works just the same. So basically, that's how variables work. There are different types. You can do float, which is a floating point number, which is basically like 64.0 or something. Right now, we're just going to focus on integers. We'll get more into float and stuff like that later. But basically, that is how to do a fairly simple C program using variables and operators and all that good stuff. We'll get more into different things like these later. For example, there are lots more. We can do a signed octal, a string of characters, unsigned decimal integer, all kinds of things. We'll get to it later. Anyway. I'm just going to give this to you in little bites at a time. <laughs> bites, that's kind of funny. So, anyway, this concludes 403 Forbidden's video tutorials on how to, com how to program in C. This is part number two. I hope you enjoyed this. My website is 403forbidden.dyndns.org. My email is 403forbidden403 at gmail.com. Feel free to send me an email if you want to. Just say hi, and you can also follow me if you prefer on Twitter. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you, well not see you, but, you know, in a kind of, uh, whatever the word is, kind of sense, I hope to see you, or um, see you in the next video. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.